Hello YouTube, the good nut here. It's another great day to be an American. Let freedom reign. Today I'm doing a little shootout uh, using my CMMG MK4T to shoot some 75 grain Hornady bolt tail hollow points. And the shootout is between two different powders. So we're using Varget and we're using the Accurate Arms 2520. So we have an extruded powder versus a spherical powder. And again, the bullet we're using is the 224 75 grain bow tail hollow point. So yeah, we're shooting 223 Remington. Probably most of you guys are probably familiar with this bullet. It does have a hollow point and a bow tail as the name implies. 75 grains. Uh, for Fargate, we're gonna load starting at 22 and a half grains in half grain increments up to 24 and a half grains. And then with Accurate Arms 2520, we're gonna load from 23 grains and go up to 25 grains. For Varget, uh, I looked at both Hornady manual, for obviously for their bullet, and I went to uh, also to Nosler and Hodgden. And they show, depending on the source, anywhere from 23.7 to 24.6 is maximum charges, so 24 and a half is right on the edge. And then for the Accurate Arms 2520, uh, I've seen anywhere from 24.6 in the Hornady book up to 26.4 with the Accurate Arms 5.56 data. So we're either slightly over for 223 loads or we're uh, still under for 5.56 pressure loads. We're using PMC 223 Remington Brass. I had some of that around that I recently prepared. And we're using Winchester Small Rifle Primers. So without further ado, we'll head out to the range and then come back to the bench and check out the results. Well, I'm out here at the range today, doing some hand testing. We're using uh, Varget. You can see there the charge levels in Accurate Arms 2520. Using the CMMG MK4T with a couple of upgrades like the, the furniture and then the scope. Simply just a Vortex Crossfire 2, 6 to 18 power. Got the crony set up, Got some crony data. All right, we're doing our Hornady uh, Bowtail Hollow Point Shootout with Varget and 2520, and also compared to some Reloader 15 loads. So that last uh, batch with uh, Varget at the starting charge of 22 and a half, it looked pretty good from a consistency standpoint. So we're gonna go ahead and load up some of these uh, Accurate Arms 2520 with uh, 23 grains and see how they shoot. Uh, the Varget ones didn't shoot really good, but I don't know. I think I'm having a rough day today as far as accuracy. I don't know what's going on. It's 2387. A little bit faster than the Varget. That could have been me, but it didn't look too bad. 418, quite a bit higher on that one. Twenty-four twelve. That one went off before I was ready. Twenty-four fifteen. It did feel close to the others. I might need to take a little break though. The barrel's definitely heating up a bit. All right, we're out here at the range today. In addition to shooting some 75 grain Hornady bolt tail hollow points with different powders, I'm also trying out these new sight sear targets from Thompson Target. I like them because they got eight targets on one sheet, so I put up two sheets, I got 16 targets to shoot at. Uh, they might be a little big for precision work, but they're pretty good for uh, lower power. Uh, the groups I'm not super happy with yet. Uh, you know, we'll talk about them more at the bench, but things were finally starting to tighten up here with that last group of. Uh, Accurate Arms 2520, I think it was with 23 and a half grains, but finally got something under an inch. The one before, I think I might have pulled that top shot. That was with Varget, but we're heading back to Varget next. The facility looks like that I'm shooting at. This is the 100 yard range. There's a 50 and a yard range and a pistol range. It, some target stands, and you put up your targets, and then over here, the shooting bench. 
Well, guys, all I can say is it was not a good day for me at the range. It was a beautiful day, 80 degrees, sunny. So not only had problems with uh, accuracy, but I had problems with the chronograph. But we'll look at the results I do have, and we'll keep that in, in mind. I shot my Reloader 15 loads, my 75 grain Bowtail hollow point. Reloader 15, 24 grains. That was going to be the baseline. I expected to get under an inch. Well, four shots went in 2.35, so I don't know what was going on again. And then another, after I shot that, I was like, what is going on? So I shot that Freedom Munitions uh, 69 grain hollow point bow tail that I shot recently, posted a short video. And that was five shots were over one and a half inches. And I had under an inch before. Obviously three of them clustered together nicely. So the first load level of Varget, 22 and a half grains. You can see there. Our accuracy, that was 0.83 inches for three shots, four shot 1.43. The first loading of accurate arms, 2520, we had a little bit better grouping with four shots going into 1.38 and two basically going into one hole. And that was with 23 grains of accurate arms, 2520. So with 23 grains of Varget, the first shot is what screwed it up here. The next three went into 0.45. Again, I think Shooter's having a rough day. So that I think could be promising. Moving on to 23 and a half grains of accurate arms, 2520. We had four shots. Finally, we had something that looked like things are coming together, right? Four shots into 0.77 inches. And then the next loading of Varget at 23 and a half grains started to, things started to go even worse here now with all four shots into 2.44. And then the negative trend continued here as we went into four shots into 2.32 inches with 24 grains of accurate arms, 25-20. And then 24 grains of Varget, we got three shots grouped under an inch with the four shot 2.28 inches. And then 24 and a half grains of accurate arms, 25-20, with four shots into 1.91. 24 and a half grains of Varget, things started to get a little better again. Four shots into 1.08. So that showed a little promise, and if that was the shooter, maybe even more promise. 520, and we had three shots into 0.76, and that fourth one just really screwed it up. I don't know what happened there. So it was allegedly a max load, and I did see with 25 grains of Varget, just starting to see some ejector wipes. Just right here we have a, a hint of an ejector wipe, a mark on the brass. So I would probably back off from that with Varget. And then if I look at Accurate Arms 2520 brass, I didn't see anything to be concerned about. In fact, even the primers looked better on these. So with Varget, we'll look at that first. At 22 and a half grains, you can see over here, 11 extreme spread, 5.51 standard deviation, and an average of 2332. So on the next level, 23 grains, we had 45 for extreme spread, 21.17 for standard deviation, and an average of 24.59. Then looking at the 23 and a half grains, again, we had some weird crony stuff going on. We had an extreme spread of 24, a standard deviation of 10.21, but the pressure didn't, or the velocity, I'm sorry, hardly went up. It went up a half foot per second at 24.59.75. But then at 24 grains, we had an extreme spread of 28, standard deviation of 15.35, and an average of 25.20 feet per second. So the velocity definitely bumped up there. And then at 24.5 grains, at the highest level I loaded, extreme spread of 45, standard deviation of 18.46, and a velocity of 25.71. So if you look down next to Accurate Arms 25.20, at 23 grains, we had... Extreme spread of 31, a standard deviation of 14.21, and an average velocity of 2408 feet per second. Then at 23 and a half grains, my crony was going crazy. I was getting like 1900 feet per second for velocity, and then I had mistakenly shut it off and forgot to turn it back on, and we didn't get any more data. So then at 24 grains, 24, I'm sorry, extreme spread of 87, standard deviation of 36.11, and a average of 2409 which again was barely above the previous the 23 grains then moving on to 24 and a half grains 
extreme spread of 51, standard deviation of 21.78, and we had the average of 2573.75 feet per second. So a huge bump up in velocity, at least if you believe the crony. So I don't know how good this data is, but we'll, this is what we got. And then at 25 grains, we had an extreme spread of 86, a standard deviation of 39.64, and an average velocity of 2669 and a half feet per second. Another big jump up there. So I think we're going to load again and try to get that data that we missed at 23 and a half grains. They gave us our best group of the day. So our best group of the day was this one, 23 and a half grains. So I got to load up some more of those. Not sure if we were coming together or falling apart, except for that one. Those didn't look too bad. We're getting some good velocity out of 25 grains of accurate arms, 2520. Obviously we're not getting good standard deviation. So I am thinking about going up to 25.2 and 25.5, and then, like I said, trying 23.5 and, and maybe going a bump down at 23.3, and loading up some more rounds and testing out some more groups. So those are the results I got, guys. Not exactly the results I was hoping for. I was really expecting to shoot some good groups with these powders and this bullet, but did not work out that way. So what we're going to do, we're going to try those couple of things with Accurate Arms 25.20. We're probably going to go buy some Sierras or some Nozzlers in the same weight range and try those and see what we get. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. You guys be safe out there.